So let's talk about some pros and cons of being out here. And if I should stick with what I have or upgrade. So, and what them upgrades might be. So stick around. You're gonna notice a little bit of humidity on the camera on this one. It was just a really humid day. So that really couldn't be helped. We're gonna try and see what we can do to prevent that on our future videos though. But watch it out anyway. Well, hello again, internet. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we are out and I am thinking I may be able to actually ride these trails without a racing mentality. <laughs> without a racing mentality. Uh, that would be good because I do enjoy it. And I have found out that it's not the thrill of being right on the edge that is so enjoyable, which I kind of thought, but I'm not willing to invest a few thousand dollars to find out. So, what kind of upgrades should we do about that? Well, let's talk about this bike first. This bike actually has a pretty good fork on it, uh, so I'm okay with that. Let's stop here for just a second. Show you this bike. The RockShock fork is a pretty good fork. Okay, it has a pretty good derailleur on it. There is a clutch on it. Here's the biggest problem that I have, and I don't know how well you can see it, but it's that chain line right there. When I get up into my first, second gears, it is a problem. It, it's, it, it's way out of line when I get up to them gears. So what I'm considering, I've got, I think it's a 42 tooth sprocket on there right now. And here's the issue. I need to place that sprocket closer to the chain stay. If you look down there, there's not a whole lot of room for that size sprocket. Well, that's a 42 or a 44 tooth on here. And so I'm thinking of cutting that down to like a 36 tooth. That should let me bring it in a little bit farther. Now, my next issue is going to be finding a sprocket that has an offset and how I'm gonna do that. And there's a thing called a spider that is the inside of the sprocket. And then I'm thinking you can place some spacers in there. By the way, we are on the same trail that we were on yesterday when I talked about what we're gonna do a little bit. But we're going the opposite direction because on opposite days, they go opposite directions. So. You might sort of recognize this, but say, something doesn't look right. Well, it's because we're riding it in the opposite way. So it's like a whole new trail. I did ride quite a bit of a new one that they have here as well. And it's, it's a dandy one, I can tell you that. But I'm considering putting a smaller sprocket on there so that I can put that, push that chain ring in closer to the frame. And that's gonna give me a better, better chain line. That would be my first upgrade to almost have to be done. Uh, I don't need to be going, I mean 20 miles an hour is the max I would need to be going on this on, off the road and that would really not even be taking place. Um, so I don't need a great big 52 tooth chain ring or anything like that. You know, I've always run a standard 46 on this bike and it was good for, I guess, off I had a little bit of wind with me, maybe 30 mile an hour, but 28, very comfortable 26, 27, which is plenty fast enough even on a commuter bike or you know out enjoying the, the, the trails like Michelle and I do. But off the road here, with this 44, it's or 42, whichever it is, it's capable of about 22 miles an hour. And so I'm still gonna drop this down to about a 36 tooth, maybe even a 34 or a 32 tooth. I think standard on the Trek Marlin 7 was a maybe a 28. I don't know if I can get one that small to fit. But that's going to be the first thing that needs to be done. And then we will see about putting a dropper post on. We'll take apart the rear derailleur, get it all cleaned up, probably at that point. 
need to go ahead and change out the rear cassette and being as we're changing a chain ring, drop a new chain on it as well. Uh, and make sure everything is smoothly operating, all the bearings and everything in the derailleur. That would be the first thing that I would need to do now. Next up from that is going to be a dropper post is going to be put on. And the next generation of Marlin 7s, you can do an internal routed dropper post. This generation, and it would have to be either, either I would have to drill a hole or it would have to be a external mounted, and I would just externally mount it. There's wires on the external of this anyway from the added motor. So I'm not overly concerned about that. I would just have to be cautious of where I place them when I put it on the trunk rack that I usually put this bike on because it's light. And I throw it on that trunk rack. Uh, and then we would have to address, I don't know that we could address the tires on it. I'd like to be running a little bigger tire, but the rims on this bike are not the greatest. I did have to change the back rim because I blew it out jumping the bike. Uh, well, I don't say I blew it out. I uh, broke several spokes that the way that they broke, they pulled through the rim so they couldn't just be replaced. And that's a common weakness of the Bontourage rims. Uh, so, you know, I would probably upgrade my rims a little bit, even though I'm not planning on killing it on this bike. You see, take note, I am speaking, I'm speaking plainly. I am not killing it out here today. <laughs> Michelle, you see that? I'm being careful. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to have a little bigger tire. So that would be one option. And honestly, that would be an option that would be a few hundred bucks. A couple hundred dollars we could have things set up. Less than a thousand, even if I changed the rims out. Uh, be less than a thousand. And that's with putting new, new cassette, new chain, new chain ring system. Uh, even if I had to completely buy a new derailleur, you know, that and a dropper post. That would be well under $1,000. Now my next upgrade would be something along the lines of the event in Ramblis. And uh, we'll wait until we come on by these guys here. And Thank you so much. Y'all have, have a great ride. Uh, okay, so the next next upgrade up would be the event in Ramblis. And that has probably not quite as good of a fork as this is. Uh, it already has the dropper post. And how you doing today? You got a couple folks coming. <laughs> gotcha. You're, you're kind of blowing them away, huh? Tell them keep up. Tell them keep up. Uh, I don't think the fork is quite as good as this one here, so that maybe would be, need to be an upgrade. Uh, the tires, I forget what size tires they are on that. It's a true class one. So that I don't know if that's an advantage yet or a disadvantage. I'm still trying to get this thing programmed to be set for a true class one. Make sure I'm not making a big mistake. But it's still a hard tail. So I'm not sure how good that option would be. Uh, a little undecided on that. My next option up would be, and I was looking at the hard cross HC3 and 4. I could probably look at the HC1, and I believe they could be had for maybe under five. The only upgrade I would have to make on that, as far as I know, would be probably a better seat. Uh, more comfortable seat. I don't want to say a better seat, but a more comfortable seat would probably be in line for something like that. Of course, top of the line would be specialized turbo or Trek rail, 
something like that, you know. Uh, you're talking really quite big money for those. I don't think, unless I found a real deal on one, I don't think I'm that interested in it. Uh, time would even have to tell if I was interested enough for a, uh, a Husqvarna. You know, I would have to take a little bit of time and really ponder whether or not that was worth it or not. But what say ye out there? So that's my, I think the second time I've done a video on this, I think the first one was basically can I ride these trails and enjoy riding them without riding them right on the edge and real, real, real aggressively. And I have worked up a pretty good sweat today, but I think that's mostly because it's very warm. I, uh, I think maybe I would be able to do that. So, and I mean, we're not riding like slouches, but I'm not keeping this right on the edge <laughs> you know i'm not hitting everything as hard as i can i'm just kind of cruising through some of this so yeah put your thoughts down there what do you think i should be doing and like always if you want to follow along and find out why hit that subscribe hit that bell so you get noticed uh notices of it and let me know what your thoughts are i uh Yeah, yeah, but I've beaten myself up too much to be continuing to beat myself up, you know, throughout my life to be continuing to beat myself up now. So that's going to do it for this one. Hey, this is Southern E-Biking telling you, stay safe. As I wheelied all the way down that hillside, God bless and keep the wheels rolling once again. We're out.